Happy New Year everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Jasmine Mund, I'm a mechanical design engineer with a key interest in the fusion industry. Today is Wednesday the 21st of January and this is our Fusion News update for the week. Let's dive right in to our top stories. 1. China fusion reactor breaks theoretical density limit. 2. US energy company installs first fusion magnet, nears clean power breakthrough. 3. AI speeds UK fusion tokamak design by 100,000 times. 4. US Department of Energy certifies Thayer Energy's fusion pilot plant preconceptual design. 5. Why is Truth Social owner Trump Media merging with a fusion energy firm? And make sure you stay till the end because as usual, I have a few interesting bonus stories that you should definitely check out. 1. China fusion reactor breaks theoretical density limit. Our first story takes us to China where researchers have reported a major physics milestone in magnetic confinement fusion. According to the chemical engineer, scientists operating the Experimental Advanced Superconducting Tokamak, or EAST, have successfully exceeded what has long been considered a theoretical plasma density limit for tokamaks. Plasma density is one of three key parameters in the Lawson criterion, alongside temperature and confinement time. Historically, increasing density too far leads to plasma instabilities and loss of confinement. This point is referred to as the Greenwald density limit and has acted as a practical ceiling for tokamak operation for decades. The EAST team used a new process called Plasma Wall Self-Organization, or PWSO, to demonstrate stable plasma operation at densities above the limit, so 1.3 to 1.65 times the limit, by utilising the self-organising manner in which the plasma and reactor wall interact during PWSO to affect the plasma's density limit and impurity levels. This suggests that the Greenwald limit may not be a hard boundary after all, but rather a guideline dependent on operating regime and control techniques. This result has important implications for future fusion plants. Higher plasma density directly translates to higher fusion power output for a given plant size, potentially allowing more compact and economical designs, as stated by Professor Pingzu from Huazong University of Science and Technology who co-led the research, findings suggest a practical and scalable pathway for extending density limits in tokamaks and next generation burning plasma fusion devices. While the result will need to be replicated and validated on other machines, it challenges long held assumptions and opens up new operational space for tokamaks worldwide. Two, US energy company installs first fusion magnet near its clean power breakthrough. Next up, we have the news that FIA member CFS or Commonwealth Fusion Systems have installed the first of 18 D-shaped magnets into its Spark fusion device, which they hope to activate next year. As reported by Interesting Engineering, the magnet uses advanced high temperature superconducting materials, allowing it to generate extremely strong magnetic fields while remaining compact and energy efficient. Each magnet will weigh around 24 tonnes and can generate a 20 tesla magnetic field while being cooled to minus 253 degrees Celsius, so minus 423 degrees Fahrenheit. These magnets are a cornerstone technology for modern fusion approaches, particularly compact tokamaks and stellarators. Strong magnetic fields allow tighter plasma confinement, higher pressure and ultimately higher fusion power output. This announcement therefore feeds directly into the broader industry trend towards smaller, faster to build fusion devices that can be deployed sooner. Additionally, CFS is partnering with NVIDIA and Siemens to create a digital twin of Spark. These are no longer isolated simulations that are just used for design. They'll be alongside the physical thing the whole way through and we'll be constantly comparing them to each other, said Bob Mumgard, CFS co-founder and CEO. The digital twin will allow experiments and parameter adjustments to be tested virtually before applying changes to the physical device allowing even faster learning from the machine. Three, AI speeds UK fusion tokamak design by 100,000 times. Our third story highlights the growing role of artificial intelligence in fusion engineering. Researchers at UKAEA, working with FIA affiliate member Digilab, have demonstrated that AI-based modeling can accelerate tokamak design calculations by up to 100,000 times compared to traditional simulation methods. According to IT Brief UK, Digilab's approach focuses on uncertainty quantification and modeling the known unknowns in complex systems. This method clarifies where models carry more risk and reduces the need for repeated simulation work. Q. 
Key focuses were on turbulent simulation, as well as diagnostic and sensing design. By using AI as a surrogate model, researchers could explore huge design spaces rapidly, identifying promising configurations early and reduces the likelihood of costly late-stage redesigns. This dramatically shortens design cycles and reduces development cost. The implications are far-reaching. Faster design iteration means quicker progress from concept to construction and better optimised machines. As the fusion industry pushes towards pilot plants and commercial prototypes, AI-driven design tools could become as essential as the magnets and materials themselves. 4. US Department of Energy certifies Thayer Energy's Fusion Pilot Plant Preconceptual Design In the United States, FIA member Thayer Energy has reached a major programmatic milestone. The US Department of Energy has officially certified the company's Fusion Pilot Plant Preconceptual Design marking an important step towards formal project development. According to Thayer Energy's press release, this certification confirms that the company's proposed fusion system meets DOE expectations for system architecture and that they have a robust path towards deploying a fusion power plant. While preconceptual design is still far from construction, it signals confidence that the underlying approach is credible. DOE certification allows Thayer Energy to move forward into more detailed conceptual design work and also strengthens its position when seeking further public and private investment. It also reflects a broader shift in US fusion policy, where government agencies are increasingly engaging with private fusion developers earlier on in the design process. This milestone places Thayer Energy among a growing group of companies transitioning from theoretical concepts towards deployable fusion systems. 5. Why is Truth Social owner Trump Media merging with the fusion energy firm? Late last year, Trump Media announced a merger with FIA member TAE Technologies, bringing significant attention to the fusion sector. The deal combined a high-profile media platform with one of the most well-funded private fusion companies in the world. Since then, both organisations have stressed that TAE's technical roadmap remains unchanged, with the merger primarily affecting financing and public visibility. An article from The Guardian states that Trump Media has also agreed to give TAE $300 million in cash to continue developing its fusion energy technology. More capital will mean the company can build its plant much more quickly. In an interview with CNN, TAE's Bindabauer said, The velocity at which you can get the capital is differentiating. If I raise $2 billion over five years, I can't build the plant sufficiently fast. While the long-term impact remains to be seen, the merger highlighted just how mainstream and politically visible fusion energy has become. And now, as promised, here are the bonuses. First up, we have a bonus from the BBC about a series of public events that are set to take place on the construction of STEP in North Nottinghamshire. The prototype is due to be built on the site of the former West Burton A coal-fired power station near Retford, which is being demolished. The events are running through till mid-February, so if you have a chance, make sure to pop over and have a look. Secondly, I have a bonus in the form of a YouTube video from the UK AEA. The video is a progress update on JET, the Joint European Taurus, which is currently being decommissioned and repurposed. And finally, I wanted to let you all know the registration is open until full for the FIA's annual policy conference in Washington DC. The fifth annual conference runs from March 18th to 19th and is a chance to discuss fusion with global leaders in policy, industry, investment and science. We're really looking forward to it. And that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to drop a like, comment or subscribe. If you'd like to know more about any of the stories or bonuses that I've mentioned, as always, the links will be in the description below. And you can follow our Fusion News Extra podcast for a more in-depth look into the topic of fusion energy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.